Hello everybody, Chaz Draycott here with Chaz Draycott Media. Now I wanted to do a review video today, so it's something a little bit different to what I'm usually doing. My friend Calvin from Sim3D... Oh. Hello everybody, Chaz Draycott here with Chaz Draycott Media. My friend Calvin at Sim3D has been making button boxes for quite a while now. He 3D prints products. They're really, really good bits of kit in all fairness. I'm not biased in any way other than he paid me a million quid. No, I'm joking. To be fair, though, he started doing something else recently, which is rumble motor kits for pedals. He's been doing them for different types of pedals uh, for, I think, about a month maybe now. Um, but eventually, he started asking people who had Fanatec pedals to see whether he could get the dimensions of them. And I have a set of Fanatec CSL Elite Load Cell pedals, so... He asked me if I could send them over, which I did, and then he sent them back about a week later, and they had rumble kits, motors, things attached. Basically what they do is, they give you force feedback in the pedals, so using Sim Hub, which is a bit of software we'll briefly go over in a minute, you can feel when the car is going to lock up, like an ABS rattle for example, or you can get it to vibrate a little bit when the rear wheels are slipping up if you've got no traction control, things like that. And it's surprising how much of a difference it makes. So what we're going to do is just quickly go over how they work, how they look, and just how they are in general right now. As you can see, they're 3D printed mounts that put the motors on the back of each pedal. These are only really applicable to the accelerator and brake, as they're the ones you would feel it through. Even still, it's a nice tidy design either way. So what you get is, you get, of course, your everyday standard plug. You also get the control box with multiple inputs in and out, which we'll come to in a second. And then you get your USB cable as well, which goes from the PC into the box. So you take your plug and your control box and, well, plug it in. Simple as that, really. Nothing too fussy. And then, of course, you take your USB cable, which we saw there, and plug that into the same side of the box. There you go. And, of course, that part of the USB goes into the PC. You then take a cable from each of the pedals and then plug them into any channel within the box. Now you might need to just check which channels they are when you go into Sim Hub, but either way, that shouldn't be too much of a faff. And make sure your cables are nicely stored out of the way. So this is Sim Hub, the software that controls basically what the run motors do. You can see I've got iRacing loaded up at the moment, but it works in any of the games you can see on that homepage there. On the left, you're going to go to Arduino, because that's the type of board they're on. Click Single Arduino, because the box contains one board. And basically, it'll see here there's no devices, because I've not actually got them plugged in at the minute. This is just as a test. But these are all the options that you can change. There are so many things you can change. Curves, thresholds, even sort of maximum amounts that you can have. You can change the volumes of them with the sliders. There's a master volume as well at the top up here. But honestly, there are so many different things you can change. You can fine-tune it how you want and what vibration you get. So have a good play around with this when you get it, and I'll put a link to the software in the description below. Now these things really suit cars that have variable or limited traction control and no ABS. That's a big thing really. If you're in a car that will lock up quite easily, such as the GTE Ferrari that we're in here, then these rumble motors are one of the perfect things. You'll see as I get onto the brakes in two cascades, it wiggles around quite a lot, gives a lot of feedback, and then the one on the throttle as well starts to really spin up on exit as the car struggles to find traction and it spins up the rear wheels. You do get that a lot, I think that's down to how I've got it set, but at the same time I'd rather know that the car is on the limit and that's what this is all about. We rely a lot on audio and visual cues in sim racing, but when you've got that extra feedback through your feet, it really, really does help. Now my driving is by no means desirable, so please do forgive the many missed apexes that there will be over the lap. This is just as a demonstration to show you when the motors are working really and when they kick in. It may look a bit drastic for them to be spinning up as often as they are but honestly through some of these corners here you don't really feel it until moments like that there on the exit where the car tries to snap away. The motors will be consistently spinning some of the time but they're not spinning at enough of a velocity for you to feel it. A bit of a lock up on the way into Druids here but you can see you can modulate the brakes and get used to it. So it really is good, it definitely helps out, especially around a circuit like Alton Park as well, you know, with all the hills and the bumps here and there. I'd definitely recommend it, to be fair, for anybody that's looking to just get that extra bit of feedback in their driving.
And here's me frantically trying to set them off and make them go mental. I want to make it clear as well, I've not been paid or imbursed or anything in any way for doing this. Um, they genuinely are really good products. They're well made, they're sturdy. Uh, you may have noticed a little bit of a loose wire on the brake pedal throughout that video there. That was just me. I was pulling the wires trying to see how tense I could get them through the frame of the rig and so on. And it just pulled the sleeving down a little bit. I can sort that. That's not a problem at all. Uh, my only real niggle was to do with the plug, in all honesty. Uh, because the three pins are quite low in the plug and then there's quite a big section above it, I have an extension lead or an extension sort of cable thing, whatever you'd call it, where the plugs sort of face each other in two rows of five. So I couldn't actually plug it in properly for quite a while unless I unplugged something else. But that's just tiny things, you know, you can get similar plugs that do the same thing. So honestly, really good product to be fair. So make sure you get hold of them as well. Like I said, links are in the description below. But thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.